Hi, Elaine here from MarkerGeek.com and today I've got another fun Stamping Bella card for you uh, showing a technique that uh, I remember seeing quite some time ago and I can't remember where I originally saw it um, but I was thinking about some different ways that we could use the Zig Clean Colour Real Brush Pens um, and I remembered seeing somebody using water-based markers with glycerin um, to create backgrounds very much like distress ink backgrounds because of course distress inks are glycerin based if I remember correctly um, uh, which is one of the reasons they're so blendable uh, and so I thought I would test out the Zig Clean Colour Real Brush Pens with glycerin and a blending tool and it worked really well. As you can see I have a as you saw a minute ago, I have a huge bottle of vegetable glycerin, um, which I bought on Amazon. I think it was something like six pounds. It's really inexpensive. And I think the bottle that I've got is a litre. So quite a lot. It's useful for lots of different things. Um, yeah, so about this technique, all I did was, as you could see, dropped a little bit of the glycerin. You really don't need very much. And in fact, you, you don't want to oversaturate with it. You only need a really tiny amount. And as you can see, I hardly used any of the drop that I popped on my craft mat. So I dropped a little bit out, got a clean um, blending foam, uh, one of the Ranger mini ink blending foams and picked up some of the glycerin and worked it into that foam then scribbled some of the Zig Clean Colour pens onto my craft mat and picked that up, picked the ink up with the same foam pad, worked it in and then worked it onto the paper and very much blended like I would with Distress Inks. Um, and as you can see, the uh, water spray technique works really well with it too. Um, you get those nice water droplet effects. Um, I also used really inexpensive cardstock for this. I didn't use the Bristol Smooth that I normally use. I wanted to see how it would work on um, my inexpensive Paper Mill Direct uh, White Plain 250 GSM cardstock that I use for my card bases. And it worked really well. I seem to remember that I have used Distress Inks on this cardstock before and it has worked really nicely. So I'll have to try those again because it is a really nice, inexpensive card to use. Um, I found that building up the colour was uh, really quite nice. It worked, I was able to get some really nice soft colour. Um, it took a little while to build up some of the deeper areas of colour. But if you don't have anything like the Distress Inks, etc, this is a really nice way to get some more mileage out of your existing supplies. You could use any water-based markers for this, even maybe if you had some of the cheap uh, Crayola Super Tip markers, which I have. Um, I might give those a go at some point. Uh, I have those for when um, we see our nieces uh, so that they can colour. Um, and also for doing some stuff in colouring books. Uh, also, you could try any water-based markers that you have with this. As I say, the glycerin is really inexpensive and it has many uses from refreshing uh, watermark ink pads, etc. to popping in with uh, cheaper watercolours to prevent them from cracking in your palette, etc. Um, I'll pop a link to a video I found, I think it was from the Frugal Crafter, that talks about lots of uses for glycerin. Um, I did move on to stamping on the Bristol Smooth cardstock that I usually use just for the colouring portion uh, of the Stamping Bella uh, images, the Under the Sea, I think this is the Under the Sea um, Critters collection or something, I forget the name exactly. Um, I did try colouring with the Zig markers on my Paper Mill Direct cardstock. It worked okay, I didn't love it. Um, for the little sort of clownfish, um, it worked fairly well. But when I moved on to colouring the whale, 
it really ended up getting a little bit blotchy and patchy um and i was starting to destroy the surface of the paper um so blending with the zig pens in the way that i've been doing using just the pens really doesn't work as well on that cardstock as it does on this which i'm using right now which is the um, bristol smooth surface cardstock uh, this is really the best one that i have found for using the pen blending technique with the zig markers um yeah so i stamped these i'm coloring them and I then move on to die cutting them to pop onto my card. I will pop some music on quickly while I finish the colouring portion and um, I will come back to you after that. Having finished the colouring, I'm now die cutting those images ready to pop up on my card and create a little underwater sort of ocean scene. I didn't end up colouring all of the images that I stamped. I decided I just wanted to have some of the fish and that adorable whale. Um, so I'm just die cutting those with the coordinating cut it out die set, which makes life so much easier when it comes to making cards like this. I do all of the um, die cutting off camera because I use one of the larger electronic die cutting machines, the eBosser from Craftwell, which I've had for several years now um, and it's still going strong. Um, so yeah, it doesn't really fit uh, in frame. So I do all of the die cutting off camera and then I'm just sort of arranging them and sort of playing around with the die cuts just to see where I want to pop everything um, and sort of deciding where my sentiment's going to go. I decided to use one of the sentiments uh, from the Stamping Bella, I think it's the Undersea Sentiments um, or maybe Mermaid Sentiments, I can't remember. There will be a link to all of the stamp sets that I used in the description below along with a link to uh, my blog post, which will also have all of the links and information on supplies, etc. Um, so if you want any details, uh, pop into pop down to the description on YouTube and you will find links to everything there. Uh, and especially links to my blog where I can put even more information. 
um, and where there will also be the photos for the card, etc. Um, I, as usual, positioned my sentiment in my MISTI and used the acetate sheet that I always use to position my stamps. And here you can see I had a little bit of a mishap with my Versafine Onyx Black ink from Stamping the Sentiment. I got a little bit of an ink smudge on the top corner of my background. Um, so obviously at this point I wasn't going to be starting again. So I decided, and actually I was really happy in the end that I decided to do this. I used some Hickory Smoke Distress ink uh, just to add some ink around the edges to kind of frame that background and I really actually like the look of that. Um, originally I wasn't planning on doing this um, but I always really, I don't know why because I always really do like the look that it gives, it kind of just frames it and brings your attention into the centre. Um, so I did that to cover up my inky mistake, um, one of those crafty mishaps that always seems to happen at the last minute. Um, and when that's done, I just assembled the card. I used some of that favourite black sparkle cardstock again from Paper Mill Direct here in the UK um, to layer and popped it onto a card base. And then in the end, I decided to add some little details with um, Tonic Nouveau Drops in White Blizzard. I think I'm about to run out of this soon because I, I have been putting it on pretty much everything might be a good excuse to order some more and maybe get some more colours as well. Um, so yeah, as you can see, I'm using um, Fabri-Tac ad adhesive as usual to glue everything down. And that's pretty much it. So thank you for joining me today. Don't forget that all of the info and all of the links will be in the description below, including a link to my blog post. And um, if you've enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe and I will catch you next time.